we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father of forgiveness, Father of love, Father of forgiveness, Almighty Father, all the blessings that Jehovah has prepared, you said to take them. By this dawn's help, may we receive them all. Within the word, what is it that I'm doing wrong? May this be a time where we realize your word. And may we surely receive these blessings. By this dawn's help, we believe that our families will be happy, that tomorrow will be better, that our children will do more well, that our families will shine. May we receive the blessings that through our lives we can show others. We believe that it will, it will happen according to the word. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. By this dawn's help, let's do well. So there's no one who wants us to do well as much as God. You know, yourself, do you think that you want yourself to do well? You keep taking yourself to ruin. You keep taking yourself to failure. It's only God who leads us rightly. But when I hate to hear this, it's not me that's crooked, it's God. So that moment that it's hardest to endure, it's when you get past that, that's when you win. So as you live, when God gives you blessings, so let's say your your dish is already predetermined from when you're born, from what your ancestors have passed down. So if God wants to give you more blessings, when he sees that it's too small, he breaks this dish. So when your dish is broken, you get upset and 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 you won't break, and so you can't receive blessings. But because God loves us, you know, when he gives this, who does he give it through? It's our spouse. If it was others, you keep, want to, keep wanting to sue them. But at least with your spouse, you'll endure a bit. You know, if it was someone else, you'd already be going back and forth. But through your spouse, he makes you upset and he breaks you. So when you break, if you receive it with thanksgiving, then others or yourself, you know, without hurts, you would change to be a blessing, a, a dish to receive blessings. But if you say, oh, it's, you know, my pride's been hurt. Where there is pride, there's sin and demons. And, and that's why you won't break and you're like, how could you treat me like this? And all, everything you've learned, all your smarts, you bring it out and you say that you want to receive blessings. But if you realize the, the 66 books, it's not, it's not others, but yourself that harms yourself. You know, you've got the sins that hate to keep God in your heart. You've got sins from your heart, sins from your flesh. It's all me that's done it. But we all say it's because of someone else. Of, So that's how wrong we are. Philippians chapter two verse one. It's all because of me. If we if if we did this, then we'd receive blessings. But this stubbornness won't break. So the more you learn, the older you get, the more stubbornness. And so the older you get, you become some piece of, you know, old old junk. But with the, with the blood of Christ, even concrete can be melted. This is why this works. You know, you and I, how much do we, you know, are we so self-righteous and, you know, it's like you live right by yourself. You know, you're so smart. You're so righteous by yourself. And, you know, you think that you love your neighbor as yourself. But in reality, we're only seeking our own profit. So if you want to discern correctly you have to be able to see yourself from the outside so what is that it's where i'm not i'm not mine but this only happens as much as you repent so that's why we have this amazing mystery of christ if i repent um if i repent not enough then i keep trying to look after myself not not with repentance but by trying to restore my body you know trying to rest 
Why do I seek rest? Because I'm thinking, oh, what if I die? But left, die, uh, death and life is what God does, but I keep trying to do it. So without me realizing, I, be, I, try, I become God. And so we all, we all do this. And so then we can't receive the blessings that God's trying to give. So how should we live this, this, this coming week? Those people who come from far away, you know, they can only come once. But every day the word to receive blessings is given out every day. So even if it's just one, the one word during the week, once, once a week, you know, even that. So even if you attend our church for one year, within one year you'll have at least a thousand things to receive blessings and to fix. So... So once in the morning, once in the day, once in the evening. So even this morning, there's thousands of verses that are given out in this morning. So if you do this properly, even if you don't attend three, four theological college within, you know, one, two years, you've got two lines to receive, uh, sorry, 2,000 lines to receive blessings. So compared to all these other pastors, you know, they... They wouldn't be able to follow this, but that's how many lines of blessings you've received. But why don't you receive blessings? You haven't made any of them yours. You're just like, oh, yeah, that must exist. But you, none of them are yours. In other words, you haven't obeyed. There's nothing that you've obeyed in the Word, so you don't have any wealth. God wants to give to you, but you need to have a dish. Well, that wealth is obedience. So you may think, oh, yeah, I should obey. You've heard that. But... For your body to follow after this, you need at least three years of training. That's between Jesus and his disciples. So you need at least three years to follow. So if you just keep repenting without you realizing you become someone that isn't me, that is because he's He's leading you. So if you, if you follow with obedience, you'll receive amazing blessings. All these things that are so surprising and prepared. So until you receive these things, if you if you go to your family and you still feel upset, then you're still living, which means you haven't received baptized. So this training can only happen by forced at repentance. But then once you've been baptized, then this word comes out as power. Before you're baptized, you're a Pharisee. There is no workings. There are no workings with this word. That's one Thessalonians chapter two verse thirteen. Why is it I know, know so much of this word and yet there are no workings? Well, you're, you still are, you know, you're still rational and selfish and the smallest thing you're like, oh, I don't need to do this and you become a stony path. You know, someone saying something to you, you need to know that they're testing to see if you're a stony path, but you just fall. Or you're like, oh, it's going to cost too much. And then you become, you know, a bed of thorns. Someone like that, they can't bear fruit. This word doesn't come out as power. So you have to clearly realize that it's you, that there's something wrong. When you hear words where they're shaking you up, you need to realize, oh, this is a test that's come, a test to see if I'm a, a, a stony ground or a good ground. So if you just, if you're a stony ground, if you let that remain, then your faith starts to fall away. You know, every crack it turns into into cement and you go off to listen to the sermons of curses galatians chapter 1 verse 6 you know it's so strange you listen to the words of blessings and then you go off how can you go so easily to listen to the words of curses without forced at repentance so that type of person doesn't have joy you look at someone without joy they're f they're filled with greed and so they're thinking, oh, yeah, this seems right. But because they don't repent, they can't find joy. And so they're sitting here with this heart of concrete. So as they're sitting here, they keep getting grumblings and complainings. If other people receive grace and do well, they can't even stand that because they're, because they're crooked. You know, it's like with light, so they end up going off. And when they receive, you know, disasters, when they're most, the thing that they love the most 
when God takes that away because he's jealous. And so it's after receiving troubles when they're smashed and when they give up on life, that's when they come here to hear this word. But then it's, but then it's, you know, late. It, you know, you've already been hit and, and beaten, but at least if you come then, that's thankful. But otherwise your family will end up, you know, destroyed. So how is it then that we should live? Well, Luke chapter 6, because we don't have time, we're just going to read these two verses. Later, please read all of chapter 6. So if you read about that, it talks about forgiving others. It's saying, you know, don't don't slander others. Don't judge others. So why? You say, oh, I'm not doing well. No. Um, it's not that you're not doing well. You're in the middle. You're in the process of doing well. You know, you say your children are obedient, but if you're not, if you're not, if you're not, you know, if you're not right and your children are obedient, later you're going to end up saying that they've deceived you. Because if that's what you're like in front of God, that's where your children end. So let's not receive this unhappiness. So if you don't want to hear God's word, you know, the ones that seek culture and manners the most are the fake Christians. It's not that we don't need those things. We do need them. But within, but you know what's most regretful about, you know, the evil. If you say good words to them, that evil will never depart because, you know, the demons won't let them let go. The evil, you need to receive hurts where you cry tears. It's when you hear those severe words, that's when that evil departs. So someone who, who this word is theirs, they're blessed. So if I experience to you, uh, that's Proverbs chapter 20, verse 30. So you'll see my wife's always here at the church and me, I do God's work with such joy to the point of exhaustion. But God gives me strength and because I receive the greatest happy, the greatest happiness, how good is those people who haven't tasted it, they don't know. But my wife, you know, whatever she says from dawn, you know, I give you the witnessings. You know, she may call me a dog bastard, but I don't feel a thing. Even if she calls me a dog bastard, I, I, I'm I, just like, oh, pastor, maybe I have to part it departed from the faith I'm going the way of a dog so there's nothing but thanksgiving it's not that I get upset and then I, I try to feel thanksgiving no you know those people who haven't done this they don't know but those people who have done this they know so why is it that God makes me hear dog bastard from dawn just in case I'll I'll step away and so he hits me he pre hits me you know, if you see a cow about to fall off a cliff, if they're going towards that direction, you'll be like, you know, you'll start to pull on them or or you'll hit them if they start going right. That's exactly what God does. So if you say, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. Why is this happening? Already you're a fake. So spouses, they're one. This is such truth. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 to 5. They're not two, they're one. They truly are. So if you... If you if you live if you get to this point you'll realize this is hap this is happiness. If you do four step repentance this is what God does. He's amazing. You know there are a lot of things where you know I was so difficult and but now it's all gone. You know if it's for others to receive blessings I'll do that but not for my own profit. So God, who is so amazing, he is making you and your children do well. So what you do this dawn, there is no loss. So now you have a line to receive blessings this dawn. In other words, it's like getting a stamp. So when this is stored up, it becomes incredible blessings. But God doesn't just give. Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 34, it says it's got to be stored up. Even being hit, you know, it's got to be stored up. Meanwhile, He's merciful, so he waits. Why? So that you'll repent. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. So he's waiting. So when you see how he's waiting, if you think of that as, oh, I'm, you know, I mustn't be receiving disasters. No. So, so there's no loss with God's word. So if we talk about this in material things, God, he gives unlimitedly. May we and our children receive these blessings. Luke 
chapter 6, verse 37 and 38. So all this time, even the word that he's given us, it's 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 so it's so amazing. But I'll keep giving you and giving you. So please keep e um, eating. So verse thirty-seven: Do not judge, and you will not be judged; and do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. In other words, you'll reap what you sow. So even now, God's word is living and working. This word that is working, well, to whom? To those who believe. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Who is it that believes? It's not just with their words. It's a faith that has changed to actions. James chapter 2, verse 17. It's only a living faith that has workings. So if God helps at dawn, who is it that hinders this? It's myself, my, my flesh. You're like, oh, today I can't go. And so then you block this. But instead of doing that to say, you know, I'm going to do this to the point of death, even if I die on the way there. If you do it to the point of death, and so I tell you how I can't even move a finger, and yet I force myself to get up with tears. And and when I come here, it's like I get strength. So if someone, even my wife, when she sees me, she doesn't understand. How could you understand? But when I'm preaching the word, because I'm so exhausted, I can't even get up. But after passing this, you know, many, many times, that's when he makes me like this. But with you, you you, you just give up. And so God, He, you don't get answers. God, he's eternal, so you have to be steadfast. That's our biggest fault. So people are different in the morning and in the evening. If you continue to, in Christ, he makes this happen. So as much as this happens, you receive blessings. So as much as you receive stamps, then you're going to receive a prize. So there is no loss. It will surely happen. So do not um, condemn and you will not be condemned. In other words, you reap what you sow. And it says, pardon, and you will be pardoned. So what the Word tells us to do, if you're saying, well, I should forgive, you know, I shouldn't judge. If you're like this, you're already doing it. If you do four-step repentance, already this happens automatically. It's not, oh, it says to forgive, I should forgive. No, no matter what anyone says, you hear it as for you to hit you, to fix your destiny. But if you're already upset and you're like, oh, I should forgive, already you're a fake. If, if you're doing four-step repentance, it's not that you're up, upset, but you're trying to just be patient. No, no matter what unfair thing they say, when you think about it, it's unfair, but you don't feel a thing. And you're like, oh, they want me to receive blessings. And so you give thanks. So in reality, it, it all just happens automatically. If you do four-step repentance, this is what happens. Amazing things happen. So events 38, give and it will be given to you. So love keeps coming out. Oh, how? How could you do that to someone like that? But love goes out. You become someone who gives. It's not about a few dollars. If you give someone love, you know, that person, their, Jehovah has their blessings prepared. If you're like, oh, I should help them with my money, you know, that's something you have to repent a lot about. At the beginning, I thought, you know, helping with material things, that was helping, giving, but it's not. That person's blessings, God has prepared them all. Me helping? You know, how many days, how, how much do you think you can help when I myself can't live without receiving help? So it's not me helping others. You know, if it's something urgent where they're about to starve, yes, you can help them um, like, like, a, like, it's, like a crow being sent. But it's not through me that I'm helping you. It's through various other places that you receive this help. If you and I, So it's all from, it's all from these other places that I, I don't know. From all these other places, God's prepared. It's not me that can give you everything, and that's why if you help um, recklessly, like thoughtlessly, then it's that's dangerous. So you don't give out of your lust. You got to pray, and so it's not material things, but love that Jesus 
on the cross, he gave all of himself, his God's love. You know, how much money did he throw at us? He, he didn't have that. He just gave love. And so, first of all, giving is love. Part of love can be material things. But this heart of giving, you know, within your spouse, just keep giving. With our spouses, without this word of truth, we'd be like, oh, you know, you're so filthy. I'm just forcing myself to deliver you because of our kids. You know, even though people may attend church, that's just the way they live. So they don't give. So it's different to the gospel. And this is why it didn't work. But now, just keep giving love. You know, by giving love, who gets lost? Oh, I gave all my love, so now I've got an empty dish. No. If you, you know, no matter how much you give, it doesn't run out. There's no loss. The more you give, the, the more good things come back to me. And so God says to give. But when we're told to give, we're like, oh, I need to have something in order to give. You know, if you're told to give to your neighbor, you're like, well, I need to have something to give. Well, the greatest love, it's unlimited. You know, who has grown old and, and says, oh, I've run out of love? No, it's, there's more, there's still more. And that's why to give. There's no one that doesn't, that hates, hate if you give to them. And yet we don't know how to give. Now let's give unlimitedly. So it says give and it will be given to you. So as much as you do this, it'll come back to you. You look at those people who don't have um, pop, who, who don't have blessings of people around them to help them. You see, those people, they only know themselves and their own family. They don't have the blessings of having people around them to help them. So, you know, when I get a drink from the bus driver, is it because I'm so popular? No, because I keep giving. Where, where I give here, somewhere else gives me something back. So, no one, no one runs out of love. It's unlimited. It's, it's not even heavy. So, just keep giving. Starting with your spouse, starting with your family, and then to have this given back. Let's receive this blessing. So give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So it's saying your blessing won't go somewhere else. It's going to be, it will, it's going to be poured into your lap or, you know, put into your pocket. So today you're wealthy why because you have love later this love can become wealth fame your children doing well but we don't know how to do this and we just want to look after our own families but even your own families you don't do it properly as soon as you get upset you start you know banging the spoon in the kitchen so because god knows all of this that's this is why you don't do well people may not know but god knows so from now Let's give and become blessed. And then it says, um, for by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. So in other words, love, everyone has love unlimitedly, but a genuine love is only in Christ. Outside of Christ, it's like, well, because you're my spouse, I'll love you. That can't become blessings. Because you're my spouse, I love you. That's that's not genuine. You can't genuinely love. Yes, maybe on your honeymoon you may say I genuinely love you, but soon afterwards you're like, oh, you bastard. So you may pretend to love, but inside you're thinking, oh, that bastard. They're going to have another affair. Oh, I can't believe I met someone so filthy. You know, someone worse than an alley cat. So because you're living like this, that's why you can never give love. But in Christ, you don't have that. You give genuine love with your spouse, with your family, with your neighbor. So whether they mistake, whether they misunderstand you or not, you keep giving love and it all comes back to you. So there's no one who receives lo loss by loving. But because we don't have this genuine love of Christ, but if we do force that repentance, it's not me, but he puts love inside of me because he comes inside of me. So when that love gets given out, it all comes back as blessings. So whatever you're doing, Joseph, even though he was a slave in some other person's house, because he did this, his master received love. You know, the other slaves, they may have beaten him, 
But because he gave genuine love, it all comes back as blessings. So in the world, they say, this is having the blessings of having lots of people around you to help you. So you may not have wealth or you're not learned or you're a cleaner or a housekeeper, but give this genuine love. If you give this, this, this love of Christ, then all these things that you and your children can't imagine, it, come, it comes back to you and you start to do well. So let's live like this so that we can become rich, so that we can receive blessings and to do well. You say, oh, I need to have something. I need to know something. No, you just have to give love. So this love is only when you're in Christ. So why is it that it should be given back? Why isn't it shaken and run over? Because you're not giving genuine love. So in the world, they say, oh, you know, no matter how much I... Uh, how hard I do this, you know, there's no popularity. They just turn around and tear you down. Because once you've experienced this, you won't help others. In the world, they say, if you help others, what comes back? If you help others, you know, it comes back. They, they return it with evil. So if you help others in a worldly way, it will come back as evil. But if you do it with the love of Christ, it will come back as blessings. So how precious is four-step repentance? Today, if we, if we are victorious, the whole day, let's give. Even if you've got just some poor business, it will come back to you as blessings. So whether it be some little shop, you know, I see someone on the street, I'll say, believe Jesus. Some people, if they're like, oh, whatever, if you give to them, that's like giving pearls to to a dog. So I don't give I don't I won't give then. Matthew chapter seven verse six. But on the other but on the other hand, those who listen, I'll say, you know, Mr. or Miss, I'll say you may be doing this, but if you keep asking forgiveness for your sins and whoever is it that whoever it is that comes as much as you know as much as you can help if you have a heart of helping as you work so you know even after they leave with their goods to say oh i hope that that person that just bought the goods that they, they they will do well so then god knows so if you have this heart as you're selling things on the, even if you're on the street later those that build those buildings around you become yours so you'll see this a lot let's surely receive this blessing so no matter no matter what anyone says let's do according to the word and become um the owner so if you don't even love your own house and you say you love others that's a lie so now let's love so to to receive blessings, we have to give. You say, oh, but I don't have money. God will make you give unlimitedly. So first, if you give your heart, then later you'll give your material things. He keeps making you give. So you look at my wife. Without anyone knowing, there are a lot of people who receive all sorts of help. So as more and more time goes by, you'll end up knowing. He, She gives so much. You know, sometimes she asks for permission to me. But, you know, thousands of dollars, she just gives. So you you may be thinking, oh, I wish I could receive that. Well, more more better, better than this is love. Because if you receive love, everything comes. Whereas, you know, material blessings is just that. But if you do these things, you receive 30, 60, 100 back. So God gives amazing things, but he gives to those who are true and who, who give. So when you give this genuine love, then he makes you give material things. So if you can ride a bicycle, a tricycle, then you can ride a bicycle, you know. So he's prepared all these things. With these blessings, let's live well. So he's prepared everything so that you are able to give. He doesn't just say give. That's not the type of God he is. So if you f first give love, then later he'll even make you give material things. So let's all become a blessed saint. Let's all pray. Lord, how have we lived thus far? We've all loved with conditions. We've lived with our own, we've tried to love with our own understanding and our calculations. Now, 
without us realizing we could be hosting an angel. So with a genuine love, no matter what that side may be thinking, for me, I repent and with God's love to give profit to others. Father God, without us realizing there'll be a time when that comes back to me. So may we and our children receive things running over. So if you, may we become someone who has blessings of people helping us. We believe uh, in Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. <laughs> 